Welcome gamers to Gamer Guide channel. I am Rollin of Robocraft and Gamer Guide, and in this episode we're looking at my Gamer Guide account and my Tearing Up series. In this episode we're going to be tearing up uh, our Gladiator Tier 4 and then also creating two brand new robots. One is the XI-5, which I had uh, mentioned I was going to make in a prior episode, and the other is something a little bit lower tier. Uh, ranking for people who are just getting into tier 5 and want to build something they can actually manage with the CPU they come into the game with. So I didn't want to skimp on the XI5 Enforcer and uh, therefore I just kind of used as much CPU as I could and I think it turned out cool. Uh, but also kind of keeping with the theme of the series I wanted to build something that people who are not um, you know upper level in the 70s and 80s at tier 5 uh, can still put together. So here I am with the Gladiator, taking that back out. This robot, um, I'm kind of a little mixed on. It's uh, been good all around, but there's still a couple issues that I want to try to work out on it, I think, before I put a build video out on this one. So uh, I'm definitely open to your suggestions, too, on things I might do to make it better. But I notice it is a little bit top-heavy, and if you don't do those spins like I did right there off the cliff, um, you can end up upside down coming off cliffs. And that is a little trick, too, if you um, are in a hover or in any kind of vehicle, really, and you jump off the side of a cliff, if you just turn while you're falling, the centrifugal force will keep you from flipping over. So it's a good trick uh, if you're on sleds or you're wheeled or whatever, even tank tracks now, because you can get air just about any off any uh, cliff surface if you hit it just right. So just keep that in mind when you're, uh, when you're out there battling. This thing's been pretty good, this build. Uh, it's, it's hardy enough, it's got lots of blocks and stuff in the right spots, uh, and enough redundancy and movement too, especially with these interior hovers, uh, that it does hold up pretty well, but I'm just not 100% with it yet. Still trying to figure out how to do it. Like, I think it's a little too e easy to disable the backside, like I just died there. So I want to try to figure out uh, maybe either a way to lighten it a little bit, or uh, trade out some armor in certain areas that would keep it uh, being top heavy, like skim off that top and make it open cockpit, and uh, maybe add some more hovers or something. I'm not sure really yet. So I speeded up these matches here. Uh, probably I'll speed up the first couple of matches with these different robots just to keep this whole episode under 30 minutes. I don't want to drag it out too long for y'all. It's not a build episode or anything, and I know these things can get pretty timely. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'll probably be keeping the last episode with the um, XI-5, the full length, so if you guys want to get some of that game sound in it uh, and not just have music in me talking, then that will be the one to check out at the end. So I was really happy with the XI-5 too, um, with all the redundancy, and I was able to use some arrow rods in some cool ways and stuff. Uh, I've kind of learned from building the 9 and the 7, and so I think I have a really cool 5. But you'll see, I don't want to jump the gun too much on this. One thing I do like uh, about this is that if you keep down low to the ground, uh, you're pretty tanky against other vehicles, and it does have pretty good forward momentum. Uh, even though I am speeding up the game here, it is still pretty fast overall. And I think it's just because having those extra hovers really does lighten the hovercraft a lot. And that's one thing I've noticed. You can get up to top speeds a lot easier if you have more hovers. I know a lot of my Electromantis and stuff from the old game uh, were just like four hovers. Um, occasion, I think a couple of them might have a, you know one or two more, but uh, I noticed when I got the Gremlin done that having the eight hovers really made a big difference in its movement speed. So I know you can do light builds to increase movement speed, uh, but having additional hovers now, like having eight hovers, I think might actually become just like a necessity. And they did adjust the tier ranking on a lot of these builds, so I'm thinking now um, that I might go back and redo some of those healer medics and uh, include some more hovers on them to get them going a little faster and uh, be a little bit more sparing on some of the electroplating just because it's so weighty. But we will see, we'll see. Something to come up. I know I wanted to uh, release the uh, Brothership next, which is also another heavy electroplate uh, user, but it does also have a hybrids and it always has, which is something that I had done at the time for stability, but I think it actually will help with its uh, top movement speed being a little faster too than some of the other healer medics I've had uh, in previous videos. 
And this game's always changing too, so I might even just wait uh, to release that until after the 22nd, because I just want to see what uh, Free Jam is going to be putting out in the new release. I, uh, like I said in a previous video, I, I suspect it's going to be the new pilot seats, which will give your vehicle different abilities depending on which pilot you plant in there. Uh, I know some of it was like better offensive abilities, some of shielding uh, allies, and then one was like a 50% heal if they're going to stay with the original plans. Uh, but I know things evolved and it did kind of surprise me with some of the uh, latest additions to the game, like the arrow rods and stuff. Uh, I didn't really I suspect that coming in. The curved cubes are cool, and uh, I have been using them. Just like architecturally, I think it makes things a little bit more interesting. So here we go. I'm just gonna another quick note here. Uh, if you're new to the game, uh, this is a good way to take these towers. Just find the connection points and then fire up the side of them, and that's a really quick way to take uh, towers. One way you can get a little boost at the beginning of the game is uh, if you're an SMG or even a railgunner or whatever, just uh, by taking the tower the right way, you can usually get a couple extra levels of uh, overclock over your team if you have the last shots, and uh, that will give you a nice boost, especially as a sniper, which you'll see later on. Uh, you know, orchestrating that right can give you an advantage, whereas if you don't get it or your team's ahead of you and they take the towers, then you're kind of stuck at, at like overclock one. It's going to be harder for you to catch up. You really have to do it in kills. Uh, but yes, taking towers with a sniper is possible. Uh, I mean, it's going to take probably two rounds or three rounds at least uh, if you're level five or lower just because you can't overclock those guns. Um, I'm suspecting at like higher levels of overclock, you'll be able to do it a little bit easier. Here's one example of me uh, taking advantage of that shield to uh, get myself healed back up and take out an enemy with just the right amount of movement. And I just had two guns when he came in out of me. But, uh, you know, just keeping my face forward uh, towards him and uh, using the advantage of uh, the hovers to get down to the ground and, you know, keep uh, him at bay, basically. I was able to do enough damage and take him out, so that was cool. So here we go again. Again, check out uh, how I take the tower. Just go up the side, and then don't waste time like hitting all the crystals. Just run to the other side and uh, go up that side, and that will get you those towers super quick and help you get those overclock uh, levels a little bit faster. And I honestly think, I mean, in the lower tiers, I get it. These people uh, who are here for the most part have been playing with the game as long uh, as I have with my Rollin account. Yeah, I've already been all the way through TX1 and done Megas and done all that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely more experienced. But uh, you know, after you a certain point, it's definitely advantageous to know how to win the game. So that's it for the first match. So that wasn't, you know, exceptionally uh, awesome or anything like that. Just kind of 8 to 4. Uh, and I still think I can make those improvements. So if you guys have suggestions of what you might like to see, I noticed uh, two that uh, I might want to add a couple more guns. I go from 7 to 9 or something. So anyway, here what I'm doing is I'm just unlocking the rest of the Tier 4 parts. And now uh, I'm starting to get into some Tier 5 parts because I want to go ahead and get into Tier 5. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and unlock some of the pink cubes, and I definitely want to go sniper rifles. Uh, so just doing a little bit of that, using some of these uh, uber tech points too that I have. Might as well, I was given them, uh, and I might as well put them to use. So anyway, I'm just collecting uh, things like arrow rods, uh, definitely going to go sniper rifles, and I guess we'll start first with uh, putting together the armadillo. So I'm going to use mostly pink cubes and rounded corners in that build because I want it to be a little higher um, tier ranking per part because it's going to be less CPU. And then the other one uh, will be uh, using mostly orange cubes because I want to use a lot more blocks and more parts uh, to make it a little more beastly. Um, that's basically what I do when I'm uh, trying to build something that is uh, kind of a super tier 5 or something or, you know, high level, I usually go all orange cubes, I'll go tier 4 cubes, and a lot of tier 4 parts, like tier 4 wheels, and then just use tier equivalent guns, but use you know more of them than normal, and uh, maybe uh, tier under in the electroplates, but use lots of it, and that actually ends up being really super powerful. Um, just because of the way the tier ranking works with cubes and stuff not being rated uh, nearly as high as the tier equivalent, you can... Um, add a lot more armor, and that equates to tougher bots. 
So it's a little bit different way, I guess, of uh, making super bots in low tiers. And uh, some would probably argue that uh, it's still a little overpowered, but I think it's actually more fair because you're not over your your uh, guns and uh, you're just basically a little bit more of a, a beefy build, you know. So it is harder to take you out, but it's certainly not impossible. And uh, good players and stuff who aim for your guns can easily uh, disable you. Now, granted, I'm going to have more guns than them, but, um, you know, a couple people working together can definitely take you down. Let me also take this time to ask you guys, if you're new here to the channel, to please subscribe. And uh, I do look at your comments and appreciate all the thumbs up you would give me. Appreciate that very much. So a little bit more about the build of this bot. I wanted to try using some arrow rods and uh, having some armor extensions outside the wheel basically as a cheap way, uh, inexpensive way to protect those wheels a little bit better uh, instead of using the electro plates all over the place. I do use them up front because a lot of times in a sniper you are going to have your nose pointed in at um, adversary. And so you got to have some kind of protection. I think electro plates is a good way if you're going to jet in and out. But uh, when you're in the middle of the action, kind of like you will be a lot with the armadillo, uh, you're still going to get hit from the sides and stuff like that. So you need to have some protection. Now, the back wheels could probably use a little bit better. I'm noticing here, like in this instance, uh, somebody had a clear shot on my rear wheel. And um, so I might try to do something with arrow rods on the back too, or maybe try to just extend it out a little bit farther and uh, include the back wheels in that kind of grid of arrow rods, uh, as right now it just really kind of comes to the midsection. Uh, I do have good protection on the top, you know, those fins on the rear uh, not only are good with the uh, gun extensions, but they keep the uh, bombers from totally taking your wheels out, you know, with a direct uh, overhead shot, basically, you have to come in at an angle. So, uh, and it's pretty good, but not perfect. And maybe another thing I could do too would be to uh, move the wheels in the front to like have one rear, two rear wheels and one front wheel. I was thinking maybe if I move things around a little bit, having the redundancy in the rear could be better since I have really good uh, front side protection. So something to consider. I'm not sure, what do you guys think? What do you think about uh, the way this thing turned out too? I think it was pretty cool, you know? This is not the, uh, I guess, premier uh, XI line or anything like that, but uh, for the CPU, I think it's really effective and I'm pretty happy with it. Not 100% on the front electro plates. I might switch that actually to be blocks and uh, maybe even get rid of some of the uh, arrow rods too that are kind of redundant on the front. Not sure yet. Right there, I just got ambushed by those dudes. So I thought I'd just jump ahead so you don't have to wait the whole 30 some seconds it was going to take to respawn. So now we're back in the action. I do like uh, the change that they did with the uh, guns being automatically loaded on the sniper. So I'm not really 100% about the, uh, the changes to the electro plates though. I was kind of hoping that that would uh, come charged, but I guess. They just thought it was overpowered or whatever. So, and with the shields and stuff too, you can usually uh, get them charged back up and get back into the action. You know, a little bit more strate strategically. It's just when you come back, you know, from the dead or uh, out in the middle of the field that it gets kind of annoying not having your, your plates all the way charged up. All right, so now we're gonna go back out, see what we can do. I've been running into, um, especially in tier five, a lot of people trying out flat tanks. I guess I'm calling them flat tanks, but kind of a thin build with uh, lots of guns on top. Uh, one of the problems I find with that though is that uh, their guns aren't you know, clear of the other ones and you end up having a build that uh, kind of makes half your guns useless, which isn't a problem when you're fighting against them, but when you're putting together bots, make sure that you have clearance on your guns and you can actually use them all. You know, go out into a practice match um, and just slowly hit the trigger. Make sure that each one of your guns uh, is clear and is firing at whatever you're aiming at. So I always do that with my robots just to make sure that there's uh, no issues and uh, go back and adjust and stuff like that if I find that one of the guns is always blocked. So in this case, I don't think I'm going to get away. I think this guy ends up taking me out here. Yep. It's got a speedy little robot. 
and uh, pretty bulky too. So, but he has to be using some kind of thrusters in there because he's able to catch me pretty quickly or pretty easily. And I'm using, uh, I think, what was it? Uh, actually, no, I, on this armadillo, I don't have any thrusters. So I guess that's kind of the downfall of it. So one of the limitations of uh, not using thrusters. So not too bad on this game. I got 13 kills, uh, 7 assists. It's kind of a normal game. It was a ranked match, so I guess that's cool. Kind of looks like it got me up to uh, rank 1 uh, right now in tier 5. But uh, I don't have a ton of friends here on the account. You know, uh, you can add me to the game if you want to. It's just Gamer Guide, uh, all in one word, pretty much. Uh, capital G's. Uh, so if you want to do that, I will accept your friend invite. Uh, I'm pretty good about that. So as long as you don't, uh, you know, constantly spam me or something like that, uh, you're good. Yeah. All right, so let's get started here on playing the XI5 Enforcer. Uh, it's a great little build. It uses 10 Tier 5 guns. So instead of using over-tiered guns, I went with having redundancy. So uh, if you get shot up uh, or in the middle of some combat and you need to kind of hide for a second, you're still going to come back with a good amount of shots, uh, even after getting pummeled. So that was the idea here. Um, I used lots of tier 4 cubes. Um, I believe this is like a 1350 build, somewhere right in there. I didn't look at the uh, total CPU count, but I'm pretty sure it's right around 1350, which is a pretty high level build, especially for a tier 5. Not as high as like the Trident or uh, the Viking uh, tier 5. Yes, there's another Viking that I put together. Uh, and it um, is really similar in, I guess, shape to the uh, Viking in Tier 9. Uh, and it's also a level 100, so it's probably one of those builds that people are going to freak out about or like a lot. <laughs> Some people will call it overpowered and stuff, but it's just really a lot of block redundancy. Um, I think it is like 7 guns, 7 or 8 guns. Um, I don't remember 100%, but... Uh, it does have some redundancy in guns, and mostly uh, spaced out and stuff, so it can take damage a little bit better. This one too, this has got a little bit of uh, damage channeling and stuff, and um, a couple arrow rods, but mostly just protect the hovers on the side from uh, flank shots more than anything else. I guess it does lighten it up a little bit, but that was a really good purpose. I just wanted to kind of look cool and have some extra armor right there on the sides. Uh, in the back there, you'll see there's some thrusters planted in the back. That's actually for reverse. There's four reverse thrusters and uh, six forward thrusters. And uh, this thing is speedy. It does get around really well. Um, it uses, uh, I think, six wheels total. The front wheels are all tier four, and the rear two are tier five. And I just use two tier four electric plates on the back side to protect. Uh, if from flank shots, while the front two wheels are totally encased in uh, cubes, pretty much. Just one layer of cubes with uh, some components on the side there. Those are tier three uh, radar jammers. They make it look kind of cool and add a little bit extra armor that's uh, functional. Also has two top side tier five radar jammers, so it's uh, nice and stealthy. Uh, with all the extra guns and stuff too, you can really get into the action and uh, take out some helicopters and still be invisible as long as you haven't uh, totally made yourself super obvious to the enemies as far as your location. Um, so I like it a lot for that. And then here in this match, you see I'm kind of able to go back and forth pretty quickly, uh, you know, from the battle to get regenerated and then get right back out into it. So I think uh, I probably, I don't know, if, you know, I always liked the build I did last the best. But I think out of all the XI series, probably the 9 and this one are my favorite. The 7 looks really cool. I like it a lot, don't get me wrong, but um, as far as like performance per match, um, I think having those re that redundancy was uh, a good idea. You can only shoot 6 guns at once, I get that, but uh, you know, if you're building something that's going to be in the mix and uh, getting shot up and stuff or getting bombed occasionally because uh, it's out in the field, you got to have some redundancy in your guns. And all the other uh, XI-7 and XI-9, I think, are pretty much just exactly what you need. Six guns and no more. But they're over tiered, don't you know? But if you lose a gun, then you only have five shots. Whereas this one, you can you can lose four guns and still be fine. So that was just a kind of okay match. That match, actually, um, I trailed the entire match because I wasn't able to get towers at the beginning like I normally do to uh, boost up my overclock ranking. Whereas in this match, um, I was able to get in there and take some towers out uh, at the beginning. So you'll see that my uh, overclock rating is already 10 here, uh, basically because I was able to, to get to the towers and take them before my allies were. Whereas in the last game, 
they basically were ahead of me, and by the time I got to the tower, the tower was already taken. So it was just a better team as far as taking towers um, overall in the last game than in this one. So here I'm just uh, getting back some guns and stuff before I got into the field and mix it up. Um, this match too, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play it out uh, with the sound at normal speed. So it'll be a little longer match uh, than the first one, but I wanted to show, you know, kind of real play without speeding through every single thing that we're doing here together. So thanks a lot guys for the support in the channel. I'm now about uh, 24, 2,400 subscribers, so that's pretty cool. I appreciate you guys all being here and supporting, and uh, love hearing from you guys in the game too. I do run into uh, some of you occasionally, and it's cool to uh, get a shout out from y'all and stuff like that, so I appreciate that. And uh, keep watching here, there'll be more build videos coming up. As I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing the uh, Brothership. I'll probably be either the next build or build uh, right after. Uh, one of the sniper builds here I do. I'm not sure which I'm going to do first, but I have been kind of putting off Brothership, and it's not really that complicated of a, a build. I know people are looking for some other tier 6 healer alternative, so I'll probably be the next one I end up putting out. Probably more of a, uh, I would say, classic mode bot than a, uh, than a bot that's going to be best suited for this kind of game, for the, the battle mode. And I say that just because anything that has, like, guns mounted on the underside, you're not going to utilize for taking out towers. It's always annoying, like right there where you just have one crystal left and you got to wait to recharge. But anyway, <laughs> I'm getting distracted here pretty easy. Uh, yeah, so underside guns with hovers or in any vehicle, really, your underside even with wheels, though it's not as common, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice because you just can't really reach the top of the uh, fusion towers to get those crystals out. And you're going to be more limited to and taking out these reactors and stuff. So, I've, you know, builds like that with the uh, medics I put out and stuff just aren't as practical really for battle mode as uh, something made specifically for, for this battle mode game. So, like that um, tier 7 um, wheel build I did that was kind of a hybrid, um, that one's really good for, for this kind of thing. You can get all the towers and stuff like that. So, uh, doom bugging. Uh, is not a bad little build if you're looking for something kind of light in uh, the CPU department and uh, able to function pretty well and all that with having those guns. And now that you have extra tier ranking too, you can over uh, tier your guns now, at least four of them, to tier eight. That's what I did recently on my build uh, that's in my garage for the Doom Buggy. And uh, added an extra um, tier five, or was it, uh, yeah, I think it was the tier five. Uh, radar jammer too, that's right above the uh, cabin to kind of protect it a little bit better. And it's uh, it's nice having that, you know. So I'll probably be doing some more medic builds here in the future, um, outside of the one that I'm releasing here uh, probably next week. I don't think I'm going to do it until we see what the new patch note's going to bring, just to make sure that uh, it's going to be a practical build. You know, this last uh, cycle, I probably what did I lose like nine bots, nine bots as far as being able to be uh, built, you know, anymore just because of the over-tiered guns, and uh, so it's a little frustrating, you know, I think I mentioned that in an earlier game too, but I'm just going to continue to make cool stuff, and uh, hopefully it's viable for a while, you know. I know we're still kind of an alpha or whatever on Robocraft, and there's lots of new things coming into the game, so it's just kind of fun to uh, continue to experiment with the new parts and stuff that come out and uh, reinvent kind of what a good bot is. Uh, the game evolves with this whole thing. My shots are a little bit off in this game, I've noticed, uh, and I think it was I was getting a little bit of lag because when I'm watching this footage, I don't remember it being uh, that crystal clear, so I'm not sure what the deal was. But uh, I'm usually a better sniper than what I'm playing as right here in this game. And some of it might have to do with the front two uh, rail guns getting so low to the ground and I noticed like the red dots are real, you know, there's a couple red dots sitting right there on the ground. So I need to be up a, a little bit higher when I'm shooting. But uh, I'm not sure if those two front rail guns on the left and right side down by the wheels are really the best position to be in if you're not like perched on top of a hill or something like that. They're almost uh, useless for to have somebody coming at you on a pretty level grounding like this tank. Let's get to oh. So, um, what else can I tell you about the XI-5? Um, those extra two tier three plates on top are just kind of protecting the cabin. I did set it back a little bit further 
uh, in this craft. The front with the windows and stuff does house the radar right behind it. I just used a tier 3 radar that's uh, internal. So it's a little harder to take out and uh, also if somebody hits the front of your vehicle it does have like a little cavernous area there with that radar on it that could be um, mistaken for a pilot. So I kind of like that idea and uh, also just not having a right work can be clipped off immediately by an enemy to make it a little bit easier to uh, keep that radar on your vehicle. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? I just went with the fin design to elevate the back and uh, decided to try out the arrow rods uh, on the back of the vehicle too to um, extend two more sniper rifles, which seemed to work pretty good. I've been kind of against the idea um, of putting too many like direct mount guns on arrow rods, uh, just because I mean it takes damage down into the core, and it's uh, you're actually getting less armor for per CPU than just using regular blocks. Now I get it, like it's great for uh, airplanes and stuff like that, and I'm actually working on a couple on my Roland account too, um, using arrow rods that are going to be like larger bombers and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'm planning to use some PX1 blocks in, in, in combination with the arrow rods to build something pretty beastly. Uh, but, you know, with stuff like um, cruisers or tanks and stuff, it's really not necessary. And in fact, you're probably doing yourself a disservice by using too many arrow rods because you're really just uh, kind of cheating yourself on armor uh, per CPU. So better just to build something beefy. Unless you're, especially with tank tracks, you know, with cruisers, I can kind of get it because uh, you want to have a light cruiser and uh, with a couple of thrusters be able to really get the top speed, then okay, I get it. Uh, also with uh, sleds, you know, that would be another good vehicle to use arrow rods with, attack. but if you're really going for uh, something with a lot of beef on it, then I would say don't worry about arrow rods because you just don't get the same return. They do look cool though. I was actually thinking a cool use for arrow rods would be to make a roll cage or something. So I might experiment with that a little bit. Do something like a cruiser that has like a top roll cage, um, which is useful. I mean, because then you can't get flipped basically. You know, or if you do flip, you get righted without having to press the uh, dreaded F button. <laughs> so um, that might be something that comes up. Make this guy point blank. I know some of the flyers by the end of this match must have been getting pretty aggravated uh, with me. In fact, I think I got spammed a couple times with the Q button. <laughs> and I know some people, players just have a tendency to do that, but then, like, near the end of the match, after you've taken out a bunch of people, uh, it seems like the Q spam, at least on me, <laughs> got a lot uh, more prevalent and a lot quicker. So. Anyway, we're going in for the final takedown here. It's another uh, little rail box. He almost gets me, but uh, <laughs> it was funny, he was just like tipping from weight on one side, I hadn't seen that happen before. But I think it was just like the combination of going over that hill and losing half this vehicle at just the uh, most inopportune time. Totally uh, got him jacked up. I have noticed a lot too of uh, helicopter snipers lately, but uh, honestly, like in tier 5, going up against them has not been an issue at all because I seem to be able to get my shots off more accurately than them uh, at great distance and that's usually where you end up engaging like other helicopter snipers and stuff. They're usually pretty wild. You have to be completely still to really get those shots off and most of the time they're out there uh, outside of the shield trying to engage. So I'm, I'm finding that uh, you probably need to be a pretty experienced helicopter sniper to really be effective. And uh, I played a little bit with like some concepts for helicopter snipers, but I still feel like cruisers or uh, walkers are superior if you don't need flying. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me here at Gamer Guide, and come back next time where we'll be starting Tier 6. I'll also be showing you the build videos here for the Armadillo, the lower CPU of the two rail bots I created, and the XI5 Enforcer, which is... The, I guess, prequel to the XI7 and XI9 that you guys already have seen in my channel. So thanks so much. Please leave a like if you would, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.